All right, Jim, Bradley Center is the scene. Gets it to bounce in. Gail Brown hurrying off the bench looking for an offensive goaltend. That ball looked like it was tapped back in while it was still in the cylinder by Indiana. O'Neal muscles it up, count the basket, and he was fouled by Matt Nover. O'Neal fighting his way across the lane, finally gets Nover behind him, rolls in, basically just throws it up there trying to draw the foul. So much think about USC. It's been 38 years since they won more than one game in the NCAA tournament, but they have a guy that can get him there, and Harold Miner, people say he may be the best player in the country. Well, H, what he does, he knows he's a star. The team knows he's a star, so there's no jealousy. He's given the green light. Whenever he wants to go offensively, he can. And uh, if he just has patience, I look for him to really bust out today. But they must handle the zone from Georgia Tech. Well, Georgia Tech uh, won't use that many people, just seven. But one of the people they use is John Barry, who really not only is a great shooter, but a great passer as well. They've got to have a big game from him. You've got to have an excellent game from him. He's a streak shooter. What John does, what he brings to the table more than the shooting, is that he sets the tone. He's aggressive. He hustles. He'll at least go to the floor five or six times, or maybe eight or nine times in this game. And also is big on assets. How do you look at this game? I know there's a lot of size on Georgia Tech versus the speed and open court play of USC. I think that USC has to solve the zone by Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech must keep their baseline out of foul trouble because they're a half a step slow, but they got a lot of muscle and a little fat down there in that <laughs> 754 pounds. <laughs> All right, so the starting lineups for this second game here in the second round for Georgia Tech, Malcolm Mackey, James Forrest, and Matt Geiger, that huge front court, Travis Best, the freshman point guard, and John Barry. For SC, Mark Boyd and Yeaman Sanders, those are the only front court players. Phil Glenn, Dwayne Cooper, and Harold Miner, part of the three guard offense. The officials, Jim Burr from Albany, New York, David Day from Spring Hill, Florida, and Bobby Dibler from El Paso, Texas, working this game. Bobby Cremens in his 11th year, and he is totally amazed as where this team has come from. He thought that game was lights out uh, two days ago. They were four down with about two, three minutes to go, but they came back strong. And George Raveling, uh, the Pac-10 Coach of the Year, who blacked out briefly during a timeout in the second half of round one against Northeast Louisiana. He's had a nice career. He's brought Washington State team to two NCAAs, Iowa to two NCAAs, and now this is the second time under his control USC has come to the NCAA. And he tells us he feels better, so... Hopefully he will be in this game. We want to apologize for our audio problems that we had when we first came on the air for this game. USC will be in the gold and Georgia Tech in the black or dark blue. USC is 24 and five. They've won 16 of their last 18. And it's controlled by Phil Glenn of USC and it'll be Trojans ball. Travis Best saved the basket that time, came from the backside and kicked the ball out. They tried a backward tap, but didn't protect their basket. The fortunate that USC didn't start off with a 2 nothing. Cooper for three. And again, USC gets the ball with Mark Boyd control. First look, Georgia Tech is playing man-to-man. Yeaman Sanders misses, and finally Georgia Tech will have a chance at it. James Barnes with the board. Try to get into low over playing as Sanders. Good cause the turnover there. For Glenn to have a good game, that's a running mate with Coop in the backcourt. He must hit his first shot. There's Miner and Barry on him. It's going up. Foul. They're going to charge Geiger with it. One thing you mustn't do when you play USC or Southern Cal, you mustn't foul Miner. That's a no-no. Harold Miner goes through some incredible rituals at the free throw line. And he'll do it every time now. Well, we're going to have about 100,000 young people throughout the country doing this. I think you're only allowed 10 seconds to get the foul off, but uh, uh, maybe it's 30. I'm not sure. Billy will know. <laughs> oh! 
plus eight seconds dancing around the rim. <laughs> Miner was nine for nine in the victory over Northeast Louisiana. He comes in averaging 27 points a game. But you know, in that game against Northeast Louisiana, never really took the game over. Wasn't dominant, even though he led his team with 23. Yeah, it was a gentle 23. Picked up quite a few of them during garbage time at the end of the game. 10 seconds is the rule, but they may stretch that. I'm going to count it next time. Nice pressure up court. One, two, two. Trying to press against the sideline. Georgia Tech has won six of its last eight games. And the point guard, Travis Best, hits the basket. It's 2-2. He had a big three to help Tech win the other night. That was a confidence builder. That's why I say Travis Best is going to have an outstanding game. He hit a big three at the end of the game that allowed the Rambling Wreck to win. And that's what he needed. He needed more confidence in his offensive game. He has to be a scorer. He scored 81 points in one game in high school. Legend in Massachusetts, Phil Glenn. This is Miner gets the offensive rebound. Ah. Mackey controls. USC really can do a job on the offensive glass. Tech will have to watch out for that. That's when they go to the zone. I think they're just showing the face right now, man to man. Maybe they won't go to the zone right now. Best will go for three. He's hit two in a row and has five points. That shot last night made his career, night before last. Freshman from Springfield, Massachusetts. And Best knocks the ball away and causes the turnover. Tough coming to Georgia Tech trying to take Kenny Anderson's place after two years. <laughs> he's got the confidence now. He's going to keep moving. Maybe he'll get 81 points in this game. You know, really, he's not a freshman after a whole year. He's practically a sophomore, but he's playing like a senior so far. Well, he knew that Kenny Anderson was leaving, so did Coach Crimmins. Co Coach Crimmins didn't realize that Scott was also there. And so now, all of a sudden, he's left with uh, less of what he thought he was going to be left with, but he's one game away from the regional semifinals. We're talking Dennis Scott left the year before. Phil Glenn committing the foul. Travis Best, not only following in the footsteps of Kenny Anderson, but years before that, Mark Price, they've had a good set of point guards. At but, you know, he's a freshman, so is James Forrest. They thought James Forrest had a shot at getting the Rookie of the Year in the ACC. He didn't get it. The kid from Bob Florida Sura. State got it. Bob Sura. Yes. Florida State beat Georgetown today. Pat Kennedy, what a year. Huh? Anybody should have Coach of the Year this year. It should be him going to the ACC and winning that many games. Seven straight points run off by Georgia Tech. Yaman Sanders. It's the shot. Got into early foul trouble. Didn't really didn't do much at all in the round one victory. Gets some foul trouble just about every game. Defense! 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 Barry to Geiger. Nice feed nice. inside to James Forrest. They also needed that for James Forrest to get him out of the gate. If he doesn't score early, he gets hesitant. Out of you. Oh, bad pass. Len tried to get it a minor. Sanders. Oh, oh, oh. Count, man. That's going to be Mark Boyd. Where did he come from? Mark Bird is, Boyd is one of the big men on the Cal team. He's a Trojan. Best shooter on the team. And they'll call Phil, Phil Glenn with his second personal foul as he grabs John Barry's arm. Some women's scores to bring you up to date. Georgia Tech was, was dead in the water three weeks ago. They had a 4-7 record in the ACC at 16-9, and then they woke up. Yeah, they got a run going. Then Duke beat them heavy in the ACC tournament. They got out of the gate fast. But uh, Bobby Crimson is very pleased with this club. And so is George Rablin pleased with his. Georgia make multiple substitutions in the first half, not as many in the second. Here's Rodney Chapman, the guy he says in a close game will be in there at the finish, and he'll replace Glenn, who goes out with two fouls. And he wants in a close game the ball in Chapman's hands, or Miner's hands, or um, hoop, hoop, hoop. John Barry with a three. He had three of those in the victory over Houston, and it's 12 to six, Georgia Tech with the early lead. Geiger staying at home down low. He's going to let Sanders have the shot from outside. Not as big a team as USC will face all year up front. And once they settle into that zone, it's awful hard to score. 
Barry's doing a nice job so far on H. Best is on Cooper. Best did another fine job. He's playing a terrific game on both ends early on. There's a scratch right there across the face. Wasn't intentional. It was an accident. And timeout. Chapman, the foul. We built this business. He was wearing those night vision goggles they make. Otherwise, he never could have seen me. Rescued me. They taught me computer drafting. I earned a degree. Now I've got a job. They make the parts that connect my pacemaker. Never thought I'd be around to tell you that. We built this business to build your dreams. Wouldn't it be great if she finally came over for a beer? Nice place. And, and you offered her a Keystone, the premium beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. Uh, but she said... I only drink dry beer. Oh, wouldn't it be great if Keystone made a dry beer? We do! Introducing Keystone Dry. Dry brewed and cold filtered for a great new bottled beer taste in a can. Now wouldn't that be great? There's a first time for everything. Your first love. First kiss, first date, first job, and your first new car. For more people, that first new car is Chevy Cavalier. A simple, solid value that'll get you through the changes until the next first time. The cars more people depend on. And now it's easy to win with the heartbeat. If I want to keep playing baseball, I'm going to have to keep working. There's no off-season anymore. And when I get sore, I take Advil. To last, you stick with what works. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. It is one of the most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. A contagious killer has flown into New York City. What's happening to me? Now it threatens every man, woman, and child. Kate Jackson, Quiet Killer Tuesday. Barry's playing H without the ball. Because after he gets the ball, you got to pray. Now, if you get if you get his head on a, on a turn in one way or the other, he's in trouble. Just play the man, play the man, play the man, play the man. Ah, he peaked there. Later on in the game, those peaks will be Tap City. Georgia Tech is a perfect four for four. Leading 12 to six. Best with a fake, no foul call. They're letting him play, and that's a good sign for Georgia Tech. Yes, better sign for Georgia Tech than USC. Minor. Still looking for his first field goal of the game. Forrest. Tipped up by Mackey and missed. And it's still Georgia Tech's ball. George Raveling screaming at the official. And I just asked him where he's going to have the pizza tonight. <laughs> and what's going to be on it. <laughs> almost Chapman almost steals it. Geiger's just too tall. Geiger doesn't look as aggressive today as he was in the last game. But it's still early. We're only five minutes into it. Georgia Tech leading 12 to 6. And here's Best with another three. That, I go back to the shot he hit last night. You will now see the true Travis Best. Travis Best has 10 points, two three-point baskets. And his confidence, you mentioned it, that three-point basket the other night. Yamin Sanders from Detroit. He's a senior. Comes right back with it, but Georgia Tech is up by seven. USC is the number two seed. Tech comes in number seven. Already had an upset in the first game. Now push off, called against Malcolm Mackey. Right, he pushed off with his right elbow. He gave a target with his left hand. You always throw the ball to where the hand is when you're feeding the pivot. Al Tempo has got to be a factor in this game considering the depth of USC and Georgia Tech not so fast. And right now Tech has it. Tech has a favorite tempo. The USC would like it a little bit quicker than this. Or much quicker than this. Up and down more. Transition. Racehorse. 
Scott with seventh and eighth race. <laughs> Chapman. And he hits a three. Rodney Chapman. I got the idea when he said racehorse. But <laughs> well, the thoroughbreds are in the seventh and eighth race. Horses in the first six races are nothing. You know it. Boyd knocked it out. Barry. There's Barry. And he, got, he got about eight more falls to go. That's only the first one. But the officials are letting the contact go. Georgia Tech goes seven deep, and that's about it. Sanders cannot play behind Geiger like that. Your pick. Yeah, see, I told you he couldn't play behind him. You got to play his thighs, Sanders, one way or the other. Yeaman. That's yep. his first name. That's a strange first name. Watch how rugged it is down here in the paint. Now, see, he's trying to get around him, but he's just too big. He's a little bit over seven feet. He's 250 pounds. And the foul is on Sanders. Mano Newbill, who had six rebounds in 16 minutes in a solid effort against Houston, has replaced Matt Geiger. And what happens, they gain weight on that move. <laughs> <laughs> on that baseline. So instead of 754 pounds, move it up to about 765. Barry Walk. And he'll turn it over. You think they've brought Geiger out? He had one foul in the game, and they don't want him to get too early. Would they be that conservative, Cremins? I don't know. I, I, that'd have to be, uh, I'd be guessing. I didn't think he was in the game personally. He said that earlier. He didn't seem as aggressive as he was in the last game. Miner with a good first step against Barry. He recovered. Yaman Sanders over Newville. Still Southern Cal ball. Nice recovery by Chapman. They leave Cooper wide open. He was open for that shot and the rebound by Malcolm Mackey, who's the leading board man, second in the ACC at over nine a game. There's Barry for three, and he's got it. So John Barry and Travis Best each with two three-point baskets in the first ten minutes of this game. Yeah, you can see they're in, they're in flow, like a golf swing or a bowling uh, ball, where you, you, know, you get that stroke down. They're both in, in, in form right now. Tech four for four from home run territory. Fancy dribble. Barry doesn't bite. Miner's still looking for his first field goal. And here is Forrest at the other end. Top rookie scorer in the ACC this year. And Georgia Tech has a nine-point lead. When H Miner goes to, uh, for the low dribble lays, looking for you to make a move with either step. Whatever foot you move up, he'll drive that side. There's Chapman in the corner. It's buried one already. Really stick a man to man by the Yellow Jackets. Still the USC ball. And coming in will be Brian Hill. A swing man who also played well in the first round against Houston. So you're looking about the seven who will play now for Georgia Tech. That's about all. A kid named Vincent might get in now and then. Making his first appearance is number 21, Lorenzo War, a 6'7 freshman. He's from Detroit, Michigan. We call him the last game, Dick, the cloud piercer. And you'll see why soon. There's Orr trying to post up. That's still USC ball. The Trojans are shooting only 25%. I was going to say Marshall is for people who expect their Chevy to do everything. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. They all knew Chevy Suburban. Now with standard four-wheel anti-lock brakes and available five-ton towing. Like Chevrolet, the trucks you can depend on, the trucks that last. Like a, a mistake was made. Okay, we forgot. We overlooked it. Say you need something said overnight. There are a few companies you can call. But say you need it Saturday morning, guaranteed. There are two. But only one is so efficient. Bobby, just give me a couple of minutes. They get it there on time for far less, which is why to some, right. there is only one. UPS. Two minutes, Let's go. 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 let us go 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 we happen to know about a few other things in the environment. So when your grass grows too long to mulch. After four straight days of rain, tomorrow's forecast is sunny. 
child. You can simply change your tricycler into a rear bagger and collect your grass clippings. The John Deere Tricycler Mower. It's as changeable as the weather. You can say that Microsoft Windows makes the world a better place. A nation more productive. A business more profitable. But really, Microsoft Windows just makes your everyday work easier. Isn't that the point of personal computing anyway? Microsoft Windows. The coach's son writes a school play. Will it hit below the belt? I have such a big stomach. Honey, it's just a play. It's a play about my stomach. It's an all-new Evening Shade, Monday. What's big in Georgia Tech's shooting, four for four from three-point range. The freshman, Travis Best, off to a great start. But look at Harold Miner. No baskets, two points in the game. Well, you know, if you want to win, you got to let Miner dig. There's Boyd with a basket. He's their star. Yeah, he scores just about every game. He's a, he can play good in the defensive end, and uh, offensively, you leave open, he'll score. Mackey gets it in the low post, and despite the deflection, scores. Orr got a piece of that ball, still went in. Georgia Tech leading 22 to 13. Best and Barry, their backcourt at 16 of their 22 points. One of the rare frontcourt baskets for Tech. There's two great guards on each other out there. Travis Best and Cooper. They got Brian Hill guarding Miner. Shatton. Barry gets the rebound and is fouled by Lorenzo Orr. That will be the 15th foul against USC. No doubt. They're digging themselves a hole here. That was a foolish foul. Dwayne Hackett, junior college transfer, who's got a good outside shot, a junior from Fort Lauderdale, has come in the game for USC. And Fred Vinson, a junior from Murfreesboro, North Carolina, good three-point threat, is the eighth man of the game for yep. Georgia Tech. That's when I said the only ones left that would get in. He's quickly from three-point He pushed off that time, got away with it. They called him on the foul earlier on yeah. the push off, but not that time. George is trying to get the ref's eye. To see him over there saying, hey, pushed off on the inside. 11-point lead is the biggest of the game for Georgia Tech. Seated number seven. And Harold Miner goes up and stepped on the line. So another turnover. Miner can't get started. He has scored only two points, both from the free throw line. Well, what they got to do is clear out a side, give him the ball, then let him do his thing. Yeaman Sanders will replace Mark Boyd in the Trojans lineup. Right now, not much from USC offensively at all. That's Vincent who just came in the game. There's a specialty, the three, long rebound, he's got it. You shoot from three-point land, you got to go to secondary rebound area, which is about three feet in front of the foul line. That was their first miss from three. They were four for four prior to that. They're using the clock. New Bill just cleared out. New Bill's not an offensive ball play. He's a grinder, hits the rebounds, plays good defense, a banger, knows his role. New Bill's foul is his first. This pace is definitely a Georgia Tech pace. Not that they don't like to score. They averaged 81 points a game, but that was against ACC competition. Now, looking at the open court of USC, they'd rather slow it down. Plus, Bobby Crimmins has moved in his three-man rotation and uh, is keeping his team fresh. Lorenzo Orr with a strong move to the basket, and he is fouled. That'll be the 15 foul against Georgia Tech. Same number by USC. And That'll be Newbill's second foul. In that time, you got to remember you people that are playing center in high school, or grade school, or anywhere. Don't bend your arm in. Just put your arm straight up. Newbill that time bend his arm in, and that's where the foul came from. So with two fouls, Newbill goes out, and Matt Geiger returns to the action. That's what Bobby's telling them right now. Don't put him on the foul line. Now here is Orr on the line. If I told you he was a 39% shooter after looking at that first free throw, you'd say no way. Every time he shoots, it's like being on uncharted waters. One out of two. It's still above his season's average. <laughs> you little 
hired you. Yeah, he's out there in the, the white caps. It's going up. Brian Hill. Touch pass to the corner. Nice spacing. USC swarming defense right now. Barry's going to get uh, the open three and yep. pass it up. Yep. What happens that what happens all the time is that when you have a hot hand, put it up because your your baseline people are going for rebound position. They're not looking for you to pass to them anymore. James Forrest will replace John Barry, who leaves the game with six points, a couple of threes, and Travis Best is in, so they're going to use Best. The freshman and Vincent in the backcourt. Actually, a one-four defense. It's flat on the baseline. Stop and go, Dwayne Cooper, and a pushing foul. And it'll be the 15 foul against Georgia Tech. Too much hands by Travis Best. His first foul. Bobby Clemens said the one thing we lack more than anything is leadership. That's why the younger players have to step up in the head. Well, the ideal leader is always your point guard. He's a guy that distrib distributes the ball, fans it out. And he's a good one once he starts looking to shoot now. Turned it over. USC couldn't take advantage that time. Trailing by 10 points to Georgia Tech. with a great pass to Mackey. Malcolm Mackey now with six points. Only starter left from the final four Georgia Tech team of two years ago. That's when they lost to UNLV. They were leading at halftime. That's when Bobby Crummins made the call to John Barry, sight unseen and recruited him, right? Yes. Here's Dwayne Cooper and he hits a three to help bring USC back after they were trailing by 12. I see where in a 24 to 6 run by Indiana. Now. Put him right back in the ball game. Here is Vincent. In the hands of Hackett. Nearly eight minutes remaining in the first half. Kind of a quiet arena in this game after all the excitement with Memphis State winning. Oh, they'll catch their breath for the second half. Out of bounds to Georgia Tech. Boyd will come back when we do. The women's final four in two weeks on CBS. Getting to know you. The uh, Geo Metro, it, it sips gas and it barely uses any. My friends think my Metro is great because of the gas mileage that it gets. All the money that I save on gas, I put away for a rainy day. I feel really sorry for gas station attendants as I drive by. The Metro gets more ways per gallon. Getting to know you. Sir, up. Now's the time to get to know the Geo Metro XF5 right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Why not have one for the road? Someone is counting on you. It could be your year for Lotto. You haven't seen Europe yet. In fact, you never know what's around the corner. If you need a better answer, you don't understand the question. A message from Bud Grine. Last week at the Lake Edna KFC, there were two incredible occurrences. One was the long-awaited introduction of new skin-free crispy chicken. People were astonished that skin-free chicken could be so crispy and juicy, astounded over the deep marinated taste. UFO is interesting, too. Get three great kinds of chicken, including new skin-free crispy in a variety bucket, just $9.99. The juiciest deal in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. On the river of life, things change. A protection review with your Allstate agent is the best way to make sure you have the right kind of coverage for your home or car. Or to set you on a course with life insurance to provide for you now or in the future. So see your agent for the Allstate Protection Review. You're in good hands with Allstate, a member of the Sears Financial Network. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. 
Dick Stockton and Al McGuire back here at the Bradley Center under eight minutes to go and Georgia Tech is up by nine. Harold Miner 0 for 4 thus far from the field. That last time out George went up to him co traveling went up to him and says hey take your time son you're trying too hard. Let the game come to you don't go to the game. So back Brian Hill is in the lineup for Georgia Tech we mentioned chat and a lean in that was Forrest with the offensive foul and a good call. So for Forrest, that is his first foul. Trojans looking to get their offense on track. They have only scored 17 points in a little more than 12 minutes, and they've averaged nearly 80 on the year. I'm going to make a call. Right now, Minder will score either from the foul line or a basket. Okay. We've got Brian Hill on him, and there is oh, a three that's missed. Chapman keeps it alive, so he still may get the chance. I'm still alive. Minor, please, so my guys will have to hook it. <laughs> nope. Boyd air ball. Nope, not nope. this time. Hold it wrong. Get you next time, Al. It's keeping Barry out for a long time, surprisingly. They've gone with Bill and Best. And a tip. Cooper. Cooper lays it in. And referee's timeout to tie his shoe. Good idea. Good move. Good move. Good move. Okay. Ready? So with the score 26-19, Georgia Tech leading. Right now, let's send you to New York and Jim Nance. Jim. Okay, Dick. Uh, Indiana right now is on an incredible run. It was 27-13 LSU. But since that time, it's 30-9. Hoosiers, 2.59 to go in the first half, and uh, Indiana with the basketball, Mike. And, and Jim, when Billy was sitting here with me, 27-13, he sat Shaquille. Billy with 11.50 left, he said, throw the knockout punch right now, don't let him get back in the game, and then they've taken off from there. They really have, and I thought that uh, with Shaquille in there, he was not obviously in any foul trouble. Uh, that was a good opportunity to go ahead and, and say to Indiana, look, you're in awe of what we're doing at this point. Knock him out and then go ahead and, and worry about benching him and putting him down later. Now they've got to bring him back in. He's got two fouls on him. Could pick up a cheap third one here uh, with about 220 to go in, in the uh, first half, and that really put him behind the eight ball. And Indiana, Jim, has done a tremendous job of dissecting that LSU defense. Just a tremendous job getting easy shots on the baseline time after time, and they can shoot it from the perimeter and especially down on the baseline. Well, I'm kind of surprised they're getting that shot from the wing, too, because they've been playing that 2-3 matchup. They started out playing a little bit of freak defense, uh, and they, they've they left Indiana wide open. Shaquille's playing that one-man zone down inside, and you can see great block out there by Matt Nover on the inside. And, but they're giving up so much size, you think LSU could go right over the top and just let a, Shaquille O'Neal touch it a lot in this game. So a 30 to 11 run in that game for Indiana. And what about Georgia Tech's lead over USC? Well, you have a red hot Georgia Tech team. They start off knocking it down from the perimeter. And Billy, they need to get Harold Miner in the game. He's off to a terrible start. Well, John Barry has been on him a good portion of this game. Uh, Miner is kind of like Jim Jackson in a way, though. You know he's bound to explode. So if you're Georgia Tech, you want to just keep uh, playing a solid game on the offensive end of the floor. Miner giving Barry a lot of physical activity on the inside, but Barry's staying with him so far. Well, there he is. We've already had one upset on that floor. Will there be another Dick Stockton and Al McGuire? All right, Jim. And right now, Tech's lead is 28 to 21. About 10 minutes ago, Al said that Miner would score. Sorry to say Al hasn't done it yet, but he will. Kick ball, and there'll be a new clock. George Ravelin. Georgia Tech has this starting team out there. Nobody's in foul trouble. Tell you what Georgia Tech is doing. They're getting a lot of the loose balls with sheer hustle right now. Paris. Geiger, who had five assists. That's pretty good for a 7-1 center. And the first round victory over Houston now already has three. Cooper works it in for the basket. Cooper now has seven. He's the leading scorer for USC. And use Miner as a decoy. Did that time with Cook. Too much hands pushing and shoving out there. Foul away from the ball. Was on Cooper. Georgia Tech 
Already in the bonus, Dwayne Hackett will come in to replace Cooper. That was his first foul. He has seven points to lead the team, and on the line will be James Forrest. That is the sixth foul. USC's in the bonus. Aaron pass by Travis Best. Here's Miner. Still no field goals, and he loses the ball to Barry. Naki. If I was Georgia Tech right here, I'd double team. Here's the steal. Barry's very quick today. Got his confidence early with two three pointers in the first three minutes. You know, Miner didn't try to chase him down court. He kind of stopped there. Yaman Sanders gets the jumper. Sanders has eight points, so he's the only one doing anything other than Cooper offensively. Seven point lead for Georgia Tech. They have led virtually the entire game. SC's got the first basket of the game. Since then, it's been Georgia Tech. And John Barry hits his third three pointer. When you got a roll going, he's going for the double fives and the double fours. He's on it. Hackett. He hits a three. Oh, right in your face basketball. What an answer because they're starting to spread out. Still a seven-point spread. SC led the Pac-10 in three-point baskets. Very sharp passing by Georgia Tech since the start of this game. Well, jinxed him again. Tipped away. I would stop USC and get the ball. Nope, they're not going to do it. I'd get the ball into H's hands. And another three. Dwayne Hackett. So two in a row for SC. Brings him to within four. And the pace is a bit too rich for Georgia Tech right now. They'll slow it down. They'll, eat, they'll take something off the clock this time down. Watch. Barry. That was a two-point attempt, and Hackett is fouled by John Barry. That'll be his first foul. One-on-one -on -one situation. In the game, Brian Hill. That big heavy baseline from Georgia Tech is starting to put their hands on their hips and pull on their pants. You know what that means? That means they're tiring. Lorenzo Orr and Dwayne Cooper check back in, and Miner goes out. Harold Miner, baby Jordan, they call him, has been anything but thus far. 0 for 5 from the field. Two points both from the line. George goes over and says, hey, son, just take a, take your breath, catch it, we'll get you back in here before the half's over. You know, but they're only four down with Miner, no factor. No factor at all. But a factor as far as the other four guys are favoring the double team on him. Timeout, 3.03 on the clock. so special it may last as long as you own your car the new xh4 congratulations it's a michelin backed by an 80,000 mile treadwear limited warranty michelin because so much is riding on your tires five to 31 despite the fact georgia tech has shot 67 percent they have five three-point baskets minor hasn't done anything and the lead is only four so george rab must be very happy about only being down four with three minutes left nobody's in foul trouble outside of glenn both teams will be rested for the second half Morris got pushed on the lob attempt from barry and will go to the line that's what you call a handshake when you touch a guy's uh, hips Lorenzo Orr with his second foul. Here in, Mini, here in Milwaukee, Minneapolis where we'll have the championship. This is just the first two rounds. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire. Georgia Tech had a 12-point lead. Forrest makes the first free throw for Tech. Gives him a five-point lead. Harold Miner, the big story of this game, big scorer in the country, has only two points. He's on the bench. All things have gone wrong for USC, right for Georgia Tech, and yet it's a close game out. Tight ball game. I think you see Harold Miner back in before halftime. There's just a little bit under three minutes left. Um, anybody's ball game. I think uh, Coach Rav should be very pleased uh, with the setup at this time, especially with um, Georgia Tech hitting five from touchdown land. 
and Harold Mine on the track. John Barry has hit three, and Travis Best two three-point baskets, and yet it's 36 to 31. USC the number two seed. With the ball is Dwayne Cooper. Hackett misses a three, gets the ball back. Two and a half remaining in the first half. George just went to mine to put him back in. Gambling for the steal is James Forrest. And open with plenty of time is Hackett and he hits the three. Good passing, they didn't get into the corner quick enough and it's now a 36-34 game with Miner coming back in momentarily. He was recruited as a shooter and he proved it right there. Each team has five three-point baskets thus far. Matt Geiger, the big seven-footer, misses, can't be saved, so SC will have the ball and Miner. Harold Miner averaging 27 a game back in. Travis Best, his return to the game, the freshman point guard, Geiger goes out. What they got to do right here, Dick, they got to get H to get a basket so he doesn't go in there at halftime and psych himself out for the second half. That's how. H, Harold Miner, let's call him H, that's his nickname. Another three for Hackett, that's four threes for the last 12 USC points. And the Trojans lead it 37 to 36. Their first lead since two to nothing. Georgia Tech is not extending their defense. That's how coming dropping down those threes. Best. And Yaman Sanders with the rebound stolen. No look pass by Barry and the lay-in by Malcolm Mackey. And Barry can do everything and he's probably as good a passer as anything. And that was very disturbing for Troy that time. They had a chance to come down and take the lead. Georgia Tech by one. Cooper. They like the threes. They scored four of them in a row. Before that miss. And the Aaron pass by Barry into the hands of Dwayne Hackett. Thirty-four on the shot clock. There's about a ten-second differential. Tech has extended their defense. Two, up, double team on H that time. Miner looking for his first basket of the game, and he's got it. Big psychological move right there. The kid goes in at halftime. The pressure's off. Now he feels he has a hot hand. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. He won't get another chance because Georgia Tech will take it down for one shot. The second half will get a lot of chances. He's the man they'll go to and they don't mind. That was so important to hit that one. One for six from the field. Barry in and out for the three. And that'll do it for the first half. And that is the end of the first half here at the Bradley Center with the score. USC 39 and Georgia Tech 38. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks more people depend on. ITT Corporation, building people's dreams. And by cold filtered Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Dry. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth. Relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America. Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The Big Q is one tough motor oil. Getting to know you. I drove literally every car in the same class, and uh, it boiled down to, I wanted a Geostorm. Guys like a girl that knows how to drive a stick. There's 140 horses in here. Can you Hello? Horses? The cockpit's laid out like a jet. You don't have to be a race car driver to drive a storm, but you sure feel like one. Get to know the new 140 horsepower Geostorm GSI. Right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Getting an old... If this car had wings, it would fly. It was the night after a game. I wanted to celebrate. So I went out and had some beers. <laughs> no big deal. I felt okay. 
I was driving slow. It was a breath test I had a problem with. Cops took me in. I lost my license. I'm off the team. Everybody's all over me. I wish I'd thought of this before. This is CBS. Oh, he's off your way. What's he doing? I think he's trying to pass. DHL, faster to more of the world. Dad, we need to talk. I know you don't like Ted, but he's asked me to be his wife. He asked me to be his wife. I'm getting married. No. I need to marry Ted. Dad, you're not losing a daughter. You're gaining Ted. With an 18D card, a busy signal's no problem. Dial pound, one, two, three. Send a message that'll get through later. Hello? Sweetheart, it's Dad. I recorded this. You know, maybe I was wrong about Ted. He's not so bad. Yes! Besides, it's not like you're going to marry the guy. What is live? Information right when you need it. What is live news? It's uh, true. When you want it live. Because it gives you the real scoop. When you need to know. Channel 5. Look for it on Channel 5. It has good news. If it's live, it's on Channel 5. USC and Georgia Tech, another close duel at uh, Milwaukee, where earlier today Memphis State and Arkansas came down to the wire with uh, Memphis State advancing. USC 39-38 at halftime. Jim Nance, Mike Francesa, Billy Packer. Billy, what about the stat sheet when you're the, the coach of this game and you come in at the locker room at halftime? And How about this stat sheet? Well, um, <laughs> Mike brought up a very good point, and it, and it does happen for people out there that have never been in a locker room with coaches. They usually gather, the head coach gathers his assistants around, they take a look at it, and they want to see what looks abnormal to them. And you look on there and you're shooting the way Georgia Tech is, and you've got Harold Miner exactly where you want him. He's got one field goal. You figure you look at the score, you've got to be up by 15 points, and you say... We're down one. Where do we go from here? <laughs> the hands are shaking. Oh, huh? yeah. No, it's, it's a big problem. Okay, let's uh, get the lineup for tomorrow. Triple header Sunday coming your way. Cinderella Sunday, really, because a lot of surprise teams have made it to the second round Sunday. Tulane and Oklahoma State or Michigan State. Cincinnati, tomorrow, 12 o'clock noon, we come on. They tip approximately 12-10. Second uh, set of the triple header. Four ways we go. East Tennessee State against the Fab Five, the freshman of Michigan. Some will see UTEP in Kansas, Iowa. State against Kentucky, or the Ragin' Cajuns against New Mexico State, the true Cinderella game, a 12 and a 13 seed in that one. And then to finish the triple header, most will see Louisville, Louisville against UCLA in the West, or that uh, Syracuse-UMass game from the East. That'll take us all the way up to about 7 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. Now, for your scores, uh, one other game in progress right now, and they're about to start the second half, about a minute and a half to go before they begin the second half. Indiana leading LSU 45-38 to as the Hoosiers scored or outscored LSU 32-11 to to close the first half. They came back from 14 down. Earlier today, Seton Hall advanced with a 17-point win over Missouri as Jerry Walker had 15 in the second half. Five players in double figures for the Hall. Next up for them will be Duke, the Blue Blue Devils advancing. Christian Leitner, 19 points and three blocks. Florida State came from, high, uh, from behind against Georgetown to win by 10. The third ACC team of the day to advance to the Sweet 16. Arkansas lost. Arkansas, the three seed in the Midwest. Memphis State's David Vaughn had 26 points. He missed a shot in the final 10 seconds, and then he followed up his own miss for the game winner with about six seconds to go, Mike. No oh, question, Jimmy. And, and really, Arkansas, Billy, had so many chances to put this game away. So Mayberry tied the game here, and here's Vaughn, his first shot. Up and no good. Oliver Miller doesn't block him out. He goes in and gets the basket. Just terrible play by Arkansas. Without question, Aaron. And the lack of dedication uh, maybe has been one of the trademarks for Oliver Miller, not only in not getting his weight and staying in the kind of shape. The man is a very gifted basketball player, but there was a case. If you dedicate yourself each and every day when that big play comes up, you're going to be in a position to make it. Oliver Miller was not. We saw some careers close today in college basketball. Yep. Todd Day and Alonzo uh, Morning. Lee Mayberry, yep. Alonzo Morning, Anthony Peeler, Chris Smith. North Carolina over Alabama, 64 to 55. Alabama, 29% from the floor. Dean Smith, 12 straight years into the Sweet 16. What a coaching job there. Ohio State will be the next uh, opponent for the Tar Heels, coming from uh, way down against UConn, 12 down in the first half, and then blitzing them the rest of the way to win it 78 to 55. Jimmy Jackson had 18 points in the second half to lead Ohio State. 
Now, we're getting set for the second half uh, first in Boise. We want to give you a taste of that game before we send you back to Milwaukee. They've just put the ball in play, so let's go out now to Sean McDonough and Bill Walton and for a taste the, of this game. front court, also on the floor. So those of you just joining us, welcome to Boise, where Shaquille O'Neal has just scored the first points of the second half. For the LSU Tigers, clad in gold, Sean McDonough with Bill Walton. Happy to have you with us for second round action in the West region. The winner of this one meets Florida State in the Sweet 16. LSU got off to a torrid start, ran off to a 14-point lead. Then Indiana dominated the second half of the first half. O'Neal changed the shot of Matt Nover. And here comes LSU with a chance to cut into the five-point deficit. LSU played very well off the start, getting the ball back into O'Neal. He's using his superior strength and power and balance to get easy shooting opportunities. Second foul on Nover. O'Neal now with 13 points. One of the few times O'Neal has been able to get free. No contact coming across the floor. Shaquille O'Neal, the SEC Player of the Year for the second consecutive year. Now with 14 points. That's four years in a row that LSU has had the SEC Player of the Year as Chris Jackson won that honor in 89 and 90. First time in SEC history that one school has had the Player of the Year four years in a row. Jamal Meeks, he provided the spark off the bench for Indiana in the first half. He opens the second half with... Bailey, Cheney, Nover, and Henderson. Cheney scores around O'Neal. 15 points for Calvert Cheney. So Cheney's having a big game today for Indiana, 47 to 43. We'll keep you posted on this game. Are we working on that blowout yet, Billy? Uh, hey, look at the bit. Hey, there was a run of 14 points. There was a run of 21 points. The problem for me was they were by two different teams. I mean, that's a 35-point differential there. We're still working on it, though. Well, it, it, we'll be there. I want to know one thing. I look over at your side of the desk and I see all of these papers I'm looking at my ink strewn that. everywhere. Where is the where's the property line here between you two guys? <laughs> well, I want to make sure Mike doesn't push me off. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Georgia Tech and USC. The Trojans lead it 39 to 38. We'll get you back for the second half as the road to the Final Four continues on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. UPS, offering 1030 guaranteed overnight air delivery. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with a clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. Halftime, and USC leads Georgia Tech by a score of 39 to 38. Georgia Tech is shooting 60%, and now they have uh, a, a deficit of one point in this game. Dick, I don't think Georgia Tech can play any better, and that's why I feel they're going to be forced to play that 2-3 zone. I feel the game is going to be decided who has the better percentage in the second half shooting from touchdown land. Miner just got his first field goal of the game. He's one yeah. for six toward the closing moments. They went for the threes, and they worked, but it looked like USC kind of opened the court and changed the tempo of this game. Yeah, USC's got more confidence. They started to hit the big uh, long shots. I think that basket by Miner is the key to the game. If USC wins, it's because Miner got out of the drought in field goals. That's his only field goal. He's one for six in the first half. Georgia Tech had a nine-point lead with four minutes remaining in the half and then a 14-3 run. And let's not forget Dwayne Hackett, who came off the bench. He's averaging only three points a game, Al. He hit four three-pointers to help USC take the lead. And he has confidence. He wants, he wants to shoot more. So that's why I say it's going to be the three-point shot from the arch that's going to decide this game. Here's Harold Miner, who has a lot of idiosyncrasies to go with a 27-point average. And uh, the question, he's going to have a decision to make whether, whether he goes hardship or not. And the same way the coach, Coach Rab, has a decision to make whether he becomes the head of the and, uh, National Association of Basketball Coaches. It'll be a tough decision for George Rabble. Underway, they'll probably make the decision together. Makes sense. If mine goes, George is gone. <laughs> man to man defense. 
Weston Mackey have 10 points to lead Georgia Tech. Hackett with 12 leads USC. Barry tried to get it into Geiger. And they're gonna call the foul on Boyd. Nearly intercepted by Harold Miner. And for Boyd, that's his first foul. Geig is unbelievably tall. He's at least seven foot one, and uh, when he gets under that basket, he pretty much, if his ball gets him where within three or four feet of him, he has it. Without even going off his feet. John Barry hits a three. That's his fourth of the game. That's the way he started off the game, him and Travis Best. Best hit a couple. So SC in the backcourt. They've got three guards, Dwayne Cooper, Phil Glenn, and Harold Miner, Yaman Sanders, and Mark Boyd, the two forwards. Watch Miner now take Barry through a number of picks. There he is coming off one, pushed out. No, this guy wants to go up. Low yeah. Boyd. Ah! He wanted to go up as soon as he got in there tight. Went back back to the basket. Didn't go for the fake. No. Forrest and the offensive foul. It's the freshman James Forrest, his second. Got a half a step on baseline. Good defensive play. Defensive band was set. And Forrest charged. Opening two minutes here of the second half in the second round matchup between the number two seed USC Trojans and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets of the ACC seed at seventh. Like Barry playing minor without looking at the ball. Just keep his eye on minor wherever minor goes. They're looking for Boyd low. And this time Boyd beats Mackey. He's got six points. He's the best shooter on this club. Over 53%. Well, first tie in the second half. Forrest with a great feed into Geiger. That was the pick and roll. Up to stop Geiger going in there when he has a step. Best way to feed a low pivot is from a high pivot. Georgia Tech trailing by one at the half, now up by two. Yaman Sanders erases that. Sanders was not a factor in the round one win over Northeast Louisiana, early foul trouble. Not score, but he's got 10 in this game. Glenn's doing an excellent job on best. It's number 11 for USC. He's on best right now. Trying to double on Geiger. He's doubling down. And back Best. Too, that was the right idea. Yep, went back too far, but Best should have buried that one. Here's Cooper trying to split the defenses, and he does. Dwayne Cooper, the senior from Long Beach. George Raveling's MVP, he says. Yep. Said that at practice the other day. He said, if I had to pick an MVP here, it would be Coop. He said, suppose... Um, Mine would be upset if he did that, but he said, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. Yeah, okay. Don't want to upset Harold Miner. Foul against Barry. And that will be the second personal foul against John Barry. That's the second foul on Georgia Tech. They go to inbound from under the basket. It'll be a double pick right here for Mr. H. They go try the first one around the second one. Nice adjustment by the rambling wreck. Tipped by Barry. Boyd in the lane over Geiger. Very tough play for Boyd at 6'7 against the seven foot one Geiger. Boyd delivers every game. 47-45, SC leads. Barry misses the three. That hard. Barry hit the floor hard. And that will be the third personal foul charged to senior junior college transfer. From Paris, Texas. That's not Paris, France. Watch, he tries to keep the ball alive here. Goes along baseline, goes way up, just tries to keep it alive. That's where he kept the foul. Here's another angle on it. Now watch him go baseline. Good foul call. It's going to come out of the game. Brian Hill will replace him. What did Barry say? He says no malls in Paris, Texas. That's why he concentrated on basketball and not anything else. I'm on his books, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Paris, Texas. you got to want to go there to find it. <laughs> USC by two. Harold Miner with only his second field goal, but it gives the Trojans 
their biggest lead, 49-45. That's his patented shot where he goes up and he looks like he's falling backwards and his feet end up in front of where he went up. Forrest goes up without it and here comes Cooper. They've got the big man, Newbill, behind him and Newbill commits the foul and that for Newbill will be his third foul. So all of a sudden, Georgia Tech with a thin bench has a couple of players in foul trouble, Barry and Newbill. Well, tomorrow's action, second round play, begins at 12.10 Eastern time. Tulane against Oklahoma State, Eddie Sutton's crew, Cincinnati, they're going to be a team to watch against Michigan State. Then the game two group, East Tennessee State, a team that shocked Arizona against Michigan. Michigan will have a tough job there because freshmen can usually beat teams they're not supposed to beat, then they lose to teams they're supposed to beat. Best thing about a freshman team, they become sophomores. Cooper's first free throw. And this other group. Ooh, Denny Crum goes back home to UCLA. And Syracuse Mass, Mass is much better than anyone thinks. But Jim Beheim's club with the four guard offense uh, causes a lot of matchup problems for anybody they play against. They gotta get a lot out of McCray. McCray has a good game. They have an outside chance of going to the Elite Eight. They did well against Princeton. They didn't get rattled by the Princeton style at all. That's because they had the four guards who could match up and stretch out their defense. 50 to 45, SC with its biggest lead now. For more than four minutes going by in this second half. Referees allowed a lot of grinding, bumping. And the short jumper by Malcolm Mackey. Mackey now has 12 points. He and Barry are the leaders for Georgia Tech. Six for seven from the field for the junior from Chattanooga. Mackey wants to put it up. He's four for four from three-point end. Yep. He needs an opportunity to get it up there, but Forrest is coming out on him. Ryan Hill is defending against Miner. Sanders wins that fight. He's one of the few guys with bulk on that Southern Cal front line. That was all hustle. Well, he wants this. He's four for four. Will he be five for five? No, he got it down. Yannon Sanders. Plays big in the big games, and Sanders, this is a big game. 12 points. He is the high scorer for USC. Up by five. Old Golden White here needs a score. Forrest with the turnaround. Mackey loses it to Sanders. Keep in mind that John Barry and James Forrest each with three fouls. Boy has it rejected by Malcolm Mackey, and Sanders wins it again. Well, what a difference between his first game effort and this. And a timeout called by Bobby Clemens. Each year, corporate America spends over $10 billion on overnight shipping. Yet according to a report in the Wall Street Journal, $3 billion of that is wasted. If you find that kind of inefficiency alarming, call UPS. We can save you up to 40% on overnight deliveries and help prevent your profits from going up in smoke. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Freedom. It's the spirit which moves the Cutlass Supreme, a car intelligently engineered to free your eyes, your hands, your senses. Introducing the new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. The look may change, but the spirit remains the same. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celathon. It's your best shot for a great deal now. You have to make the product fit the customer. If somebody says, I need that, then go into that business. They say that toy collecting is the fastest growing hobby in the United States. We're working out of three locations just to meet the demand. We created the AT&T Custom Net plan specifically for businesses with multiple locations. We've got toys from Hungary, Russia, China. Custom Net combines all of their long distance bills for the maximum discount. The NCAA Division II Basketball Championship, next Saturday on CBS Sports. Junior college transfer here from Polk sends a vote into Sanders right there. And he's elected. And an election year, that was about as easy to 
than we'll have with the other parties, right? Well, Pope Junior College is in Florida. John Barry back in the game. He's playing with three personal fouls. Best top of the key. Hit the shot. Been a while since best scored. His first points of the second half. 12 for him. USC was on a 9-2 run in the last two and a half minutes. What happens here, if USC continues this lead for the next seven or eight minutes, they'll spread the floor out and bring that heavy baseline out high and then blow by him defensively. So it's important that the Brandon Rick tightens up the score. Miner gets a screen and hits the three. Harold Miner, who's second on the team in three-point baskets, now has nine points. He'll probably end up somewhere in the mid-20s. Eight-point lead, the biggest of the game for USC. Lob pass, batted out by Miner. Here come the Trojans. They love the open court. They want to play transition basketball every time out. Dream became a reality this year. Beat UCLA twice, Arizona once. Beat Ohio State. Yeah, that was a big one. Here's Hackett. He hit four three-pointers in the first half. Now John Barry trying to go all the way in, and the blocking foul will be called against Dwayne Cooper. Cooper stepped in that time, too, obviously. Third team foul against USC, and for Cooper, his second personal foul. There's the Indiana score, 63 to 55, midway through the second half of their game, and Boise against LSU. I wonder if Shaquille O'Neal will stay. What happens to these big guys? They face so many Mickey Mouse defenses, they get frustrated. Triangle two and box ones and so forth. Geiger has a block. Fine play by Mark Boyd. Giving up several inches. Nonetheless, giving Geiger a tough fight. And on the kickball will be a new clock for SC leading 57 to 49. And they're kind of opening it up here in the second half. Got to tighten up on the D if you want to have a close game here. Yaman Sanders out briefly back in the game. And Rodney Chapman. So Boyd leaves the game. And Geiger goes out, and uh, somebody threw uh, a cup on the court. So that's why we have a delay. Warren Sanders, uh, the front court men for USC. USC runs a three guard offense. Top minor is a guard. Keep Warren Sanders down low. Hill is in the game. So Best and Barry at guard. Hill's a swing man, and they've got Mackey and Forrest. So the seven-foot Geiger on the bench right now. Geiger has scored six points today. Why they put Hill in, they want to get fresh legs on Miner. Miner's starting to rev up. I think Tremont said we're going to use a lot of people on him. And there's a three. Nearly got fouled as well, but a three-point basket, his second revved up. That's the word. Yep. 60 to 49, an 11-point lead. Miner now putting on a show after scoring just two in the first half. Here's Travis Best, a key basket to break a run. Dick, big, big, big basket. Alley oop. Beautiful to Lorenzo Orr. And that was a cloud passer underneath. Give a tip of the hat to the pass, but... It was Chapman who got it to him. Forrest has it blocked, and they're going to call the foul on Lorenzo Orr. Love to see this one again. Watch Chapman where he places it. And this cloud piercer can really break through. Almost up to his elbows that time. <laughs> and he points in your face. That's what you call jiving, trashing. He's a crowd pleaser. Dwayne Cooper replaces Dwayne Hackett for SC. Orr picks up his third personal foul. LSU's getting closer to Indiana in that second round matchup. Here's James Forrest, 70% free throw shooter. The other day had an ingrown toenail removed, and so he wasn't 100% in that first round against Houston. Boyd. Major Major being a freshman dick and getting 26 points against North Carolina. That's a dream become a reality. That's what this young man did. He was tight in the voting for rookie of the year in the ECC. Down at Tobacco Road. He's a big one, the top freshman scorer in the conference. Lorenzo War on the bench with three fouls now. Good decision made that time by Coop. 
Here's Miner over Hill. He had the arc. Rebound by Mackey. Nine-point lead for USC. They were up. Trailing by as many as 12 in the first half. Oh, what a Barth gift. gets the basket and will go to the line. What a gift. He went by the ball. He started to dribble. They kicked the ball out. He had to come back and get it. They could end up a trifecta. Unbelievable. Watch. He goes right by the ball here. There's the kick of the ball. He comes back. Everyone stop playing. Never stop playing. Even one second after the whistle, you can stop, but not even during the whistle, a little bit after, one second after, then stop. Because those are a chance of getting continuity. A lot of people may stop. You can get the easy hoop. Second foul on Yaman Sanders. 14 fouls for both squads and a timeout here in Milwaukee. Beer with the genuine taste of the king of beers, Budweiser. When the time comes that you need a hand with life insurance, let your Allstate agent work it out on paper, starting with your house and a policy to protect your mortgage. Of course, if your family's already filled out, your agent can help you fashion a plan for a college fund or for retirement that promises nothing but smooth sailing. So let your Allstate agent be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate, a member of the Sears Financial Network. In pilot jargon, it's called a walk-around. You see them do it before every takeoff of every plane. What you don't see are their qualifications to fly those planes. It takes them years and thousands of hours of experience. And every year they're schooled and tested. No exceptions. Because when you're a United pilot, you hold a lot more in your hands than just the controls. Come fly the airline that's united the world. Come fly the friendly skies. It's all been thought out. All engineered. Precisely where you want it. So where would you put a cockpit like this? In a rocket, of course. Introducing Achieva by Oldsmobile. Never has so much thought gone into this much fun. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celathon. It's your best shot for a great deal now. Have you ever dreamed you could fly? Now, the world's greatest illusionist conquers the mystery of human flight without strings or camera tricks. An all-new Magic of David Copperfield, Tuesday, March 31st. All right, Georgia Tech, before the timeout, tighten things in Milwaukee. Uh, Jim, Mike, and Billy in New York, and let's uh, squeeze in a look in Boise right now with LSU and Indiana. An eight-point lead for the Hoosiers with a little more than six minutes to go in this one, Billy. Well, two things that Bob Knight did against this particular defense that the LSU is playing. One, he flattened things out offensively, put his key shooters down on the baseline, Henderson and Anderson. Then he put uh, Cheney right down in the low post area with Shaquille O'Neal. Now, normally you say, hey, wait a second, he's our best scorer. Why are you putting him closest to their best defender? What it is is he's too quick and he maneuvers too well inside the paint, and Shaquille O'Neal cannot get to him. Right now, he's working on 27 points. 71, 64, 620 to go. Mike? And the thing, other thing is, he had such a dominant position in the game early, Billy. It was 27-13, 11 minutes left first half. He put O'Neal on the bench. Since that time, Indiana, with a couple of times LSU has gotten back in the game, Indiana's been able to keep that five to seven to eight point margin. Let's see what LSU can do on this possession. Score it in a three point opportunity that could cut it to four. Jim, one of the Singleton, Vernell Singleton. One of the things that uh, LSU, it, all of a sudden, is this has become a half-court game. You know, they're playing one half at each time. I think LSU can get an opportunity to start trying to break a little bit, open up some margin, get a little bit better flow into their game. They will keep you posted on this game. We'll show you the conclusion. A little more than six minutes to go. Meanwhile, same score. Oh, change that. Georgia Tech 
with John Barry from the outside. And just when we thought USC might be pulling away, back come the Jackets. I mean, USC had really taken control, Billy, in the second half here. As we talked about in the first half, Georgia Tech shot the ball real well, 15 to 22. Minor was not in the game at that point, only four points. Looked like it would be a USC second half. They started off very well, and now Georgia Tech, which proved the other night that it was a feisty club, back in the ball game. And here's Southern Cal really has been doing a job inside against a team, a, a big front line at Georgia Tech. Mackey, as you see, going down on the floor. They've got Geiger, a seven-footer on the inside. New Bill can come off the bench, and that's been a problem for Georgia Tech today. They've got nothing off the bench off offensively. By the way, the Indiana lead is back to seven, and the Hoosiers have possession. Let's get back now to Dick and Al. USC still has a three-point lead, an air ball from the corner, and here comes Georgia Tech. They've got some players in foul trouble, but Best makes an errant pass. And here come the Trojans. They get Miner up court. Over to Chapman, all the way with Chapman. Oh, nice. Miner gets beautiful. fouled. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Did you think he was going to pass, Chapman? No, I thought he was going to go up and maybe get a three-point play. George is still looking for the intentional foul over there. When they put their two wrists together, that's what it's supposed to mean, intentional foul. You said he was planting a seed. It's going to be a long seed. Yep. It'll take a long time to germinate. It's up there. A good chance of a possible three-point play there. All right. Ten seconds. Billy Packer told me ten seconds from when he touches the ball. I hope Billy. I hope Billy's right. I'm going to count it this time. He'll use all ten. I guarantee it. I'm going to count it. One thousand and one. One thousand and two. One thousand and three. One thousand and four. 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 9, 10. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> he made it. He, he just made beat it. it. You know, he heard you count it. <laughs> he heard me. You bet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> 63, you saw Matt Geiger return to the game. Those in foul trouble, James Forrest and John Barry each with three. I am trying Mississippi, 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 Mississippi. Oh, it's Mississippi. one Mississippi, two Mississippi. That's what that means. No matter what you do, he's going to make the he's going to make the foul shot. The trick in playing USC is not to put H on the foul line. Ten points this half, 14 in the game for a minor, and it's 64 to 59. USC trying to advance to the regional semifinals. Another Georgia Tech turnover. There a lot more Minus sloppy. Three. And here is it. Boyd with the basket. Ten points for Boyd and four or five uh, Southern Cal players in double figures. And the push against USC, and that'll be their 15 foul. Watch how they spread out this time going down court. They could have led, and it gets it over to Minor on the left. Unselfish minor feeds the man free underneath. Good team play. Chapman commits the foul. You know, Al, coming into this game, USC, not a balanced team with minor doing most of the scoring, but they have five players in double figures now. Well, hey, you can't be seated number two in the country just with one ball player. Coach Rab got a lot of ball players out there, but only one minor. The women's final four in two weeks on CBS. Things are different. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better. Because this Grand Am gives you a more powerful 16-valve engine standard than either Accord or Camry. They charge thousands more for this much power. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement. What do you smell? I can't smell anything. My nose is clogged. Yeah. For fast relief, try Dristan 12-hour nasal spray. Now smell. It's an orange. Dristan nasal spray just works incredibly fast. Dristan, the face of relief today. It is one of the most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. You're about to see how Goodyear is changing all-season driving right before your eyes. Introducing AquaTread, only from Goodyear. 
Aquatred's advanced design channels water out of your way for dependable all-season traction, especially in the rain when you may need it most. Aquatread, the newest reason why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Let's take a look at these shooting percentages, and we're not just talking layups. Pretty good. Georgia Tech at 61. Miners gotten underway. Best had a good start. And USC has outscored Georgia Tech 18 to nothing off the bench, with Dwayne Hackett having 12 of those points. Got to remember now, Georgia Tech only has one timeout remaining. And three for USC, Matt Geiger. He has eight points. The other four starters are in double figures for the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech remaining man to man. A lot of bumping and grinding down low. Trying to get Miner free. Barry with three fouls is guarding Miner and the rebound into the hands of Mackey. Barry, nowhere to go with it, had to throw it away. I thought he should kick that back out to Travis Best that time. He was spotted up. He wanted to pass back. You could see that. Georgia Tech has turned it over 17 times to only eight for USC. That's a lot for a team that isn't running all that much. We expect those turnovers to be just the opposite. Cooper, and they got Mackey. Second foul on Mackey and the 17th foul on Georgia Tech, so it'll be one and one at the free throw line. Georgia Tech, as Al just mentioned, only one timeout left. That's not a good position to be in with 8-12 to go. Dwayne Cooper on the line. USC's season a one and one. They can get one more foul before Georgia Tech goes into the one and one. And the arrow favors USC. Cooper's the second leading scorer on the Trojans. He's got 11 now. He can match his season's average if he connects here. He's the toughest kid in the team, mentally and physically, in my opinion. A lot of people were surprised that USC would be as high as a two, but they beat Arizona. Now, in retrospect, you say, so what? Arizona got knocked out in the first round, but at the time, that was a big win. One free throw for Cooper, and it's a six-point lead for Southern Cal. This is their best record in 18 years, and Georgia Tech wants to spoil their part. No foul. Great team. Geiger tipped in. Let's see if it was Geiger or Barry with the basket. They'll give it to Geiger. That was close to an offensive interference that time. Geiger the rebound. All five Georgia Tech starters in double figures. Down by four, this is Tech's chance to come back. Mackey, he got inside position, automatic, they either foul him, which they did, didn't allow a three-point play. We might be going for another photo, we just got through one in the first game, an exciting game, only in Milwaukee at the Bradley Center. Where it is snowing heavily outside and the golf game is canceled after this game. Right, I feel like the nook of the north, I got my car outside someplace, it's in an igloo. You'll find it in a few days, don't worry. <laughs> foul is the 16th foul against USC and Mackey is on the line. Checking in Dwayne Hackett, so when he comes in, you know that George Raveling is looking for the long-range attack. Yeah, the three-guard offense. Once Hackett, the hot hand the first half, buried four from three-point land. Mackey, so-so free-throw shooter during the year, has been hot lately. This was his first attempt today. I wonder if they put pressure up court if he makes this one. I doubt it because their their baseline doesn't have that foot speed. But we'll see what happens. This probably be Barry and Travis Best token pressure. And 
a two-point lead for the Trojans. No pressure at all. It might come in half court. I doubt that. It says three on the board, 67-64. And it's, it is two. Scoreboard a little tardy. Not on our traffic. They're right on. Tiger out to meet Boyd. Barry's starting to turn his head on mine, and that's a sin. Don't turn, Barry. Mine will go back door on you. There he is, right at the key, the two of them. Mine just wants that ball. There it is. He has 14 points, but he hasn't had that ball oh, lately. There it is, low dribble. The new ball. Tiger, and here's a three on one. Three on two, and Best lost it. Out of bounds. Farsh made a mistake that time. Here, once he gets down, you reach your foot in like he did then with a low dribble. He's going to take you to, uh, to the cleanest. G uh, Geiger underneath a seven foot one. He rejected in your face basketball. Here goes Geiger up. All ball. And at the other end, Al Malcolm Mackey is fouled. And it's bonus time for both teams. And the foul was against Miner, just his first of the game. Miner, first of Seven. One of the top big men in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Back for another year. He's been to three straight NCAAs. Only starter left from that Final Four team a couple of years ago. Here comes Lorenzo Orr back in. And Yeaman Sanders sits down. Only one timeout left for Georgia Tech. Both teams in the bonus right now. And the possession arrow favors the Cardinal in gold. Sanders will be back in. Just give him a, a blow before they got to the last run. He's played great. 14 points. He and Miner now. Naki has 16. He's the game's high scorer. And we have a tie score. Cobb wants the ball in Miner's hands. There it is. Nice bounce pass down to Orr. John Barry is guarding Miner. Hackett wants to pop out for three. Best on the switch now has Harold. Great, you're on the money, Dick. Great defensive play by John Barry. When you hesitate, he flew at the man which created the walk. What do you think decides this thing now with 7, 624 remaining? Turnover. Right now, turnover. You just don't want to. First zone by USC with the 2 3 zone there. Now the commander, man to man. It's this match underneath. Forrest should take Miner down low. There he goes. Tech is on an 8 to 1 run in the last three and a half minutes. Miner the rebound on Barry's miss, and we'll have a foul call against Georgia Tech. He'll be shooting one and one, and it'll be Matt Geiger with his second personal foul. I don't know if Bobby should give Geiger a blow right now. Maybe get him out of there for 30 seconds or 35 seconds or a minute, and then um, let him come in for the final run. Does he look a little fatigued to you? Yes. You see him pulling on his pants there. Watch his hands. Hold it down. And they start pulling on their pants like that and resting on their knees. That's usually a sign they're tired. Either that or putting their hands on their hips. He's gotten a little bit more aggressive this year than other years. He's a transfer from Auburn. Here is Miner. You love the gyrations he goes through, but he's four for four from the line and was nine for nine the other night, so he has yet to miss in the tournament. Just gave him the lead. I, I, this relaxes him. He goes through this, especially that part. <laughs> he makes love to basketball. But uh, since I've been watching, he hasn't missed. So maybe everybody else should do it that way. <laughs> 69 to 67. SC leading. Under six minutes remaining. Tech better at the line. Or I should say USC better at the line than Tech. You want Barry to go around baseline. John, go around baseline. Move. You're not moving enough, John Barry. He looks a little tired. They're tired out there, but uh, they want to go to Kansas City, both clubs. Keep in mind, Georgia Tech, more of an Iron Man group than USC. They rested their people there. Ten on the shot clock, Al. Geiger from Barry. Ties the game at 69. Neither team has folded. 
Barry has five assists, leads the team in that department. Coach Rav just went to Coleman, he wants Coleman in. He said there's three guys he wants with the ball at the end. That's this guy that's shooting, no pass, and this guy. Cooper, Miner, and Chapman. Game has settled into a half-court affair to this point. Barry is overplaying Miner, posting up, getting inside. It's going to be Georgia Tech ball as Lorenzo War came very close to stuffing one in. Here is Rodney Chapman. Hey, let's get you up to date now on the story in the West. Indiana with just a minute, 12 seconds to go, has a 12-point lead over feisty Dale Brown and the LSU Tigers. Shaquille O'Neal at the line with 32 points on the game. They get 33 now. But LSU with a 14-point lead at one time in the first half, then fell off, trailed at halftime, Got within three of Indiana, but that's it. Then the Hoosiers got some more big plays, Billy, by Calvert Cheney. Calvert Cheney was really the man on the inside to provide the offensive touch for IU. Let's get back now to Georgia Tech and USC. Travis Best has just hit a jump shot to give Georgia Tech the lead by two. Under four minutes remaining. Georgia Tech looking for the upset. Seventh seed against the number two USC Trojans. Trojans with a double pick down low. Sanders is going to go up town with it. Yeam and Sanders surrounded by two Georgia Tech defenders. Try to save it as Chapman, but Georgia Tech ball. They'll use the clock, leading by a bucket. Not too much of the clock. What they'll do is try to get movement. They won't take it too far down, I don't believe. They only got a two-point lead. They got to go for the first good shot they see. Maybe take it down 10 seconds, and then anytime under 20, they'll go for the shot. Signaling for the ball is Malcolm Mackey. Geiger. He's got Sanders on him. John Barry with a big throw. Six for eight from three-point land. Wow, that's a big one. Now look for that trio. This fella here. Chapman, that's a bad foul because three he's shots. going to get three shots on it. Forrest with the foul. That'll be number four on James Forrest. Four on Forrest, and SC will go to the line to shoot three. Four on Forrest, and the score is 74-69. Chance to cut that lead in half. Boy, has this dramatically changed? No, they're not calling it a three-point shot. They're calling it a one-on-one. -on -one. There's Lorenzo War. A high flyer has come in the game. They got a lot of big people in. Sanders is out. Chapman is a 71% free throw shooter. Missed his first of the game, and now he connects. The better box buoyed out. He got into the lane real fast that time, went to the weak side. Watch number 33 in the baseline right here. Chapman makes one out of two, and Geiger the rebound. And Stephen will turn the ball over to USC, trailing by four. But Georgia Tech is on a 13 to three run. Not just white. Really white. Not just white. Really white. When you want whiter white. Still you... going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Things are different. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not a cord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement.
McDonald's introduces the return of the Wild West. May I take your order? Yes, ma'am, I reckon you can. For a limited time, rustle up a saucy, sassy McRib. Or a Western Omelette McMuffin for breakfast with peppers, onions, and ham. Or try a satisfying 99-cent chicken fajitas or 99-cent breakfast burrito. Howdy, boys. What you want is what you get. Mind if I join you? At McDonald's today. Five hours in a balloon, how romantic. Five hours? What about my diarrhea? Don't worry, honey. I brought the Fermatine. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Arlene Brickman came as close to being a mob guy as any mob girl ever has. What did she do for the mob? 60 Minutes, Sunday. Georgia Tech with one timeout left. The possession arrow goes to USC if there's a tie-up. We have 2.49 remaining in the second half. Georgia Tech on a 13-3 run, leading USC 74-7. USC wants the ball in the hands of Chapman, Miner right there, or Cooper. Prefer Miner. Cooper has it now. Here's Chapman going for three. Rebound, Boyd. And welcome to the Bradley Center. We have two and a half minutes remaining in the second round matchup. And it's a good one. Georgia Tech leading USC 74-72. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire coming down to the wire. He had that pressure real good with 1-2-2. Two, two. Nice pacing now. Takes something off the clock. Not a lot. USC must stop Barry from three-point land. He has hit six of nine from three and has 18 points in the game to lead Georgia Tech. Geiger, the seven-footer, goes up and an offensive foul called against Matt Geiger, and that'll be his third foul. Paul clearing out with his inside left arm that time. That's the ref called. Georgia Tech has been on a 13-3 run. Timeouts remaining, only one for Georgia Tech. James Forrest is playing with four personal fouls. And USC with a chance to tie the game. Harold Miner, their leading scorer at 27 a game, has missed his last six, has 16 points all told. Battis presses on Cooper, Barry's on Miner. Miner goes up and ties the game. He had only one basket in the first half, Al, but he has really come alive in a big way. Where he got the break, he scored the basket, about 15 seconds left to go to half, which gave him confidence. Barry wants to put it up and he gets a shot of this kid. Whoop! Best lost control of it. Volleyball. USC. Trying to break the tie. Lorenzo Orr does it. Georgia Tech seems so tired they didn't get back down court that time. USC leads as we wind down to a minute to go. Georgia Tech having to bring it up against pressure. Georgia Tech has to be careful. Only got one timeout left. I might burn it right now and get the team straight. Barry nearly slipped coming off the screen. One-handed shot ties the game once more. We have had eight ties. Barry, Barry, nobody recruited this kid out of uh, high school? And Bobby Crimmins gets him for a phone call? Sight unseen. Sight unseen out of a junior college called Paris Junior College in Texas. Here we are, power against power. Shot clock is off. SC could get the last shot to win it. One thing you don't want to do is foul minor. Everyone's in the bonus. Foul by Georgia Tech would mean two shots. Yep. These kids will have the ball. The shot will be taken by one of the three. Minor. This kid here, Chapman. Or Cooper. Chapman goes up with it. And a timeout call. 2.2. Quick timeout. It's just going to have to be a Hail Mary pass down the court. Up high. Rodney Chapman, who George Raveling told us at the end of the game, in a close game, he'll be in there. Yeah, one of the three guys he wants with the ball at the end. This was one of the three of them. 
George Rav has his first opportunity to go to the second round of the NCAA in his career. He's been the six NCAAs, two in Washington State, two in Iowa, and this is the second one with the Troys. Now, Georgia Tech has to go the length of the floor with 2.2 seconds. He's just going, he just going to throw an alley-oop pass, in my opinion, the full length of the floor. You don't need a three-point play, have a scramble down there. I would try to throw the ball anywhere near Geiger because being seven foot one, he pretty much will control that space around him down low. Georgia Tech is out of timeouts. USC has not been to the second round of the NCAA tournament in 38 years. That's how close they are to getting to round three in the regional semifinals. Welcome to the close of this game. 2.2 seconds of a thriller. USC on Rodney Chapman's basket has broken the tie. They lead Georgia Tech 78-76. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire. And the Trojans are less than three seconds away from moving to the regional semis. A la 1977 when we won the national championship in the semifinals. Score was tied. Butch Lee threw the ball the length of the court. It touched off Bo Ellis and Jerome Whitehead tapped it in at the wire. You need a little luck, don't you, sometimes? In life you do, but it's better being good. Georgia Tech had a 12-point lead in the first half. Southern Cal came back and led by one, and Harold Miner, their big point man, has 18 points. He has struggled throughout the afternoon, but others have picked up the slack. Coach Rav is saying, hey, don't foul. Let's set the five guys down back court. I put one man up on the man taking the ball out so he can arch the ball more. I put a tall man on him to create. Well, it uh, looks like Geiger's going to take it out. Well, this is a, this is a set play. It's called home run. There's a set play. Look for Forrest to, to uh, swing around and go down. It has to be all the way down. And SC has to make sure they don't foul. Yeah, they, they can't have, they have more timeouts. If they have another timeout, they catch the ball, they can call a timeout. It has to be all the way down. I would have put Geiger all the way down. Here it goes down to, to uh, Travis. No, no, not today. There's no way. And it's off the leg of Chapman. Eight-tenths of a second, so Georgia Tech still has a breath. But, uh, the two seconds should not be off the clock. The clock doesn't start till you touch the ball. The ball went off his foot. They will have to at least put one second back on the clock, a la Al McGuire. Now, George Raveling just said that Georgia Tech took a timeout and they don't have any left. Well, that's even more. You have to put a second back on. They got to put a second. Well, maybe they're not. All right, here we are. So Raveling claims that Tech took a timeout that they shouldn't have it. It should be a technical. They just got to throw it under the basket. Under the basket. Up. Forrest shot. Oh. Oh. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Remember, it's the horn. Let's listen for the horn. Forest basket, but listen for the horn. Or look for the light. He made it. He made it. Heartbreak Hotel for USC. Heaven for the Yellow Jackets. Can you believe that? And you were just talking about how you and Marquette won on a play like that. They'll be down there for five minutes. Only in the NCAA. Only in college basketball. And he clearly made the shot before the horn. Georgia Tech has stunned number two seed, SC. It was Geiger who got it to Forrest. James Forrest, the freshman. The hero, Georgia Tech, 79, and USC, 78. Two games back to back. What games? Thank you, NCAA, for coming to Milwaukee. And thank you, Al, for being here in Milwaukee. So Georgia Tech will play Memphis State 
in Kansas City in one of the regional semifinals. And we have eight more games tomorrow of this great tournament. And the Chevrolet players of the game, of course, James Forrest, who won it with a jumper, and Harold Miner of USC, who scored 18 points. Jim Nance will take it out. Breathtaking here in Milwaukee. Final score, 79-78. Georgia Tech wins it. We'll join Jim Nance in just a moment. So in game 40 of this year's tournament, a buzzer beater comes out of the woods at last. James Forrest, a freshman, with his first three-pointer of the year. The second time this year he won a game at the buzzer. Tonight on CBS, the special Real Life Heroes, followed by the boys of Twilight. And we want to set the lineup one more time for tomorrow. Triple header Sunday here on CBS, Tulane and Oklahoma State. Some will see Michigan State against Cincinnati. We come on the air at 12 noon Eastern. Then we'll go four ways around 2.20. Many will see East Tennessee State against the Fab Five, the Michigan Wolverines. And then the finale. Many will have Louisville against UCLA. Others will see Syracuse against UMass. For Mike and Billy and all of us at CBS Sports, Jim Nance, hope you enjoyed this crazy day of basketball. We'll see you back here tomorrow.